Hi, it's Steph, and we're at Lowe's. And they have a bunch of new shrubs and trees and even some perennials. And one which is really cool and I'm really excited about. So come along and let's check out the June inventory at Lowe's. These spirea here are absolutely loving all of this rain that we've been getting over the past couple of days. It's been a little cool and the slow trickle of rain has been doing the plants some good. This one here with this beautiful chartreuse green color is the Double Play Big Bang. It's a proven winner's color choice shrub. And let's see how big it gets. So this one here is a sun or part shade shrub, hardy in USDA zones three through eight or down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets to be two to three feet tall and wide. So nice and compact. This one is around or just a little bit bigger than the candy corn spirea, which has also this really beautiful chartreuse foliage in the summertime and these pink clusters of blooms and the pollinators love these blooms. But look how pretty that is. It's a great way to add some yellow foliage to your mixed shrub borders. And this here is, let's see how big this one is. This is $27.98 for a two gallon container. And here is the Checkmark Trilogy Wygela. This is a beautiful Wygela because the flowers go through different colors. They start off a bright pink and then they age to a lighter pink and then they end up looking almost white. So this one is a spring flowering shrub. It's also by Proven Winners. It likes sun. It is hardy in zones four through eight and it gets to be three to three and a half feet tall and wide. And look how beautiful that is. Now it still has some of the blooms on the shrub, but this is just past blooming at this point, but really beautiful. And this one here is also, I want to say 27, yeah, 27 98 for a two gallon. <clears throat> and right beside it is another similar looking Wygela, but the difference is that the Sonic Bloom Pearl says it's a reblooming uh, Wygela, which is amazing because you'll probably get sporadic blooms throughout the season on that shrub. And the Sonic Bloom, let's see how big this one gets, is a sun, it looks like it's a sun loving shrub, hardy in zones four through eight or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And this one here gets to be four to five feet tall and wide. The Proven Winners Sonic Bloom is also a two gallon for $27.98. And right beside the Wygela, they have some Pugster butterfly bushes. Look at this one. This is the Pugster Blue. They're absolutely beautiful. The blooms on these are very reminiscent of lilacs, both in their form and in their fragrance. I actually had the Pugster butterfly bush, it's a dwarf butterfly bush, in my garden for a couple of years, but I had it in a very wet bed, and butterfly bushes like to be on um, a well-draining, well sunny location. So because of that, the drainage was poor, and they only got through a couple of seasons. But this Pugster also comes in white, in amethyst, just really pretty colors. It's a dwarf butterfly bush. This is a proven winter shrub. And they like sun. They are hardy in zones five through nine or down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And they're small at only two by two, two feet tall, two feet wide. And the Pugster butterfly bush is a two gallon for $27.98. Another beautiful shrub with these very dainty pink white flowers is the Yuki cherry blossom. It's a Dutzia. And this is also a proven winter shrub. It likes sun. Look at this photo. Beautiful. It can also take part shade and it is hardy in zones five through eight and it is petite at only one to two feet tall and wide. So this is a great shrub to have as a container shrub. If you wanted to use shrubs in containers, I also love to use evergreens in containers. I feel like they make really pretty container plants. And look at that, gorgeous. It blooms in spring, it looks like, because it's spring now and it's just about finishing up. And this one here is two gallons for $27.98. And then it just has green foliage otherwise. And here's another Wygela on the side of it, or Spirea. This is actually a Spirea that I have never seen in the garden center before. It's the Double Play Artisan. 
They like sun or part shade, hardy in zones three through eight or down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And this one gets to be two feet by two to two and a half feet tall and wide. So nice and compact. Of course, if these guys are happy, they will continue to grow, but I find them really easy to control with a light pruning. It looks like Proven Winners is now also coming up with some reblooming azaleas. Typically, it's been the Encore Azalea brand that you normally see as a reblooming azalea, but here they are with the Perfecta Mundo Double Pink Reblooming Azalea. And this one here, look at those beautiful blooms. The light exposure, it likes sun and part shade. And they're hardy in zones 6B through 9, so I am in a 6B, so this is right at the cusp of my zone here, down to negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit, and it gets to be 2 to 3 feet tall and wide. The foliage looks really pretty, nice and shiny, so even when it's not in bloom, you have this nice shiny green foliage. And this here is, let's see, it's 1.71 gallon for $27.98. All of the shrubs in this 1.71 to 2 gallon size appear to be... $27.98. And look at this really beautiful, vibrant phlox. And it also has this really gorgeous dark stem. This is a Monrovia plant. It is the, let's see here, Monrovia Sweet Summer Rose Phlox. It is a perennial for full sun. These are $10.98. And let's see. It needs six hours of direct sun, low watering once established, and it gets to be 24 to 32 inches in height and 18 to 24 inches in width. So this is a middle of the border type plant. So you have your short ones in the front, these would be in the middle, and then something a little taller in back. And it blooms in summer and it is hardy to negative 20 degrees to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The color on this is beautiful, so nice and vibrant. The thing with phlox is you wanna make sure that you give it ample um, breathing room in your flower bed. So leave a lot of space for air circulation around it because some varieties of phlox are more susceptible to powdery mildew. They have improved on the newer varieties and so it's not as prevalent, but something to keep in mind when you plant some phlox. Let's check out some shade plants. And the first thing that caught my eye was this really vibrant hookara. This is also a Monrovia plant, and it is the guacamole coral bell. Look at this. It is a partial sun or shade plant. Um, I would say that you certainly want to probably put this in, in some shade because I can see that some of these that are getting a little bit more sun have a little bit of sun scorch on them. Now, of course, plants that say they can take a little bit of sun, if you keep them well watered, they can usually tolerate a little bit more sun. But if that's not going to be the case, if you feel like you're not gonna be able to be on top of the watering, then put it in shade. This vibrant color will really light up a shady spot. The Monrovia Guacamole Coral Bells is a perennial. These containers are $13.98. It says that it is deer resistant, but tread lightly with that because I've had something eating on coral bells before. Could be deer, could be bunnies. Um, the light, it needs one to three hours of morning light. So if you are going to plant this somewhere that gets sun, morning light is usually a bit softer. And so that will be a better um, light situation for these types of plants. Watering semi-moist, the maturity size is 12 to 24 inches in height and 12 to 24 inches in width. They bloom summer, I'm sorry, spring, summer. So what happens is they send up their bloom stalks in spring and then early summer they usually bloom. But of course it will depend on the variety. And their blooms are these little stalks and actually I can show you but these are hardy negative 20 to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit so they're actually already starting to send up their bloom stalks and this is what they look like and then all of these little buds will open up now you mostly grow coral bells and hookara for their foliage but you do get some blooms that come up and the pollinators do tend to um, buzz around them and some of them are pretty colorful. This one looks like it might just be a white color, but that's what the blooms look like on coral bells. Another way to add a lot of interest to a shade garden is by having some pretty foliage. And check out these foam flowers. Now these are past their prime now, so the blooms are gone, but it looks like they were pink when they were in bloom. And it has really pretty veining on the foliage. Look at that. So let's check out this variety. 
This is the Pink Revolutions Foamy Bells. And it is a mounding perennial. It blooms in spring. These are the Lowe's House Brand containers for $8.98. It likes shade, one to three hours of morning sun. And it is hardy to zone five or negative 10 to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It matures to 12 to 15 inches in height and 18 to 24 inches in width. Another beautiful shade loving plant are hosta. And I really love the blue foliage hosta like this one here. And this one has a really cool name. It's called, let's see, Marmalade on Toast. It's a mounding perennial. It likes shade one to three hours of morning sun. It blooms in summer, and I'll show you what the blooms look like on Hosta. And this container is $8.98. It is hardy to zone three, so really hardy. Negative 30 to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets to be 24 to 36 inches in height and needs 24 to 36 inches in width. And Hosta come in so many different varieties that you can create a beautiful shade garden with just the different colors of foliage. So the blue one is beautiful and then there's this bright green one here called August Moon. It has like a bit of a yellow hint to it. And the August Moon Hosta, it blooms in summer. This one's $8.98 also shade with about one to three hours of sun tolerated on these. Hardy to zone three, negative 30 to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and this one gets to be about 30 inches in height by 30 inches in width. So really good size. And this variegated one here, which I'll check out the variety, um, is already sending up its bloom stalks. So this is what the blooms look like on Hosta. They send up these bloom stalks, and then they open up. They have these little uh, trumpet shaped blooms and they come in, they're usually about a lavender color, light purple that fades to a little bit of almost white, but they're really pretty. Some people will actually cut these bloom stalks off, but pollinators really love them. So that's one reason to keep them up. This one is by Monrovia and it's called the Atlantis Hosta. It is a perennial for part shade. These are 1098. And it has a really pretty, almost like a, a wavy kind of edge on the foliage here. And it's variegated with a dark green in the center with this chartreuse green on the borders. And this one here, let's see, semi-moist soil, one to three hours of morning sun. Gets to be 30 inches in height by 70 inches in width. This is a big one. So give this one space. And it is hardy negative 30 to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And one of the more popular ones, this green with the white edging, is the Patriot Hosta. So Patriot Hosta here is also partial shade, partial sunshade. It's a perennial for 1098. And this one here gets to be 23 inches in height by 50 inches in width. And pretty much the light requirements, the water requirements, and the hardy is hardiness zones are pretty similar for all of the Hosta. What you'll find more variation is, in is the foliage colors as well as the size. So this one also gets pretty large at that 23 inches high by 50 inches wide. Here's an example of a container that I would seek out to buy if I was looking to buy Hosta. You see how this one has multiple shoots right here? This would be a great candidate to try dividing right out of the container. Yes, you will have a smaller plant, but by next year, the two divisions will look just as big as this one here. So if you're trying to save money when you're gardening um, and you wanna have a few plants but not spend a lot of money that's a good option see you can see there's one here you can definitely get at least two out of this plant here and now that i'm looking for it i see a bunch more that are great candidates for division look at this one very clear delineation between the two this one almost looks like you could get three out of it so always keep that in mind when you're shopping for plants look at this one two sometimes they even put more than one plant in the container in an effort to make them look fuller so that would make it even easier to divide these. So great money saving tip when you're trying to establish and grow some gardens. Look at all these gorgeous colors. We have that guacamole hosta and then the caramel coral bells by Monrovia. I bought one of these last year. It's absolutely beautiful. And then you have that foam flower that we saw on the other side. So this is just an example of how you can have so much color in a garden with just foliage if you have a shady area. 
This caramel hookara is stunning. It's got this orangey color with this caramel that almost looks yellow. Really, really pretty. So many different colors on the same hookara. And look at these beautiful astilbe. Another wonderful plant for a part shade garden. Has beautiful foliage and it gets these gorgeous blooms. Look at this one, getting ready to open up. So let's see what variety this one is. This is the Vision Astilbe. Vision comes in pinks and reds. Um, the reds are more of a fuchsia color, but they are an upright perennial. They like shade. I find that these definitely need a little bit of sun in order to bloom best. So I would give it that one to three hours of morning sun if possible. And they, um, this container here is $15.98. It is a little bit bigger. And I have to say this one is worth the money because it is a huge plant. I'll show you a better view in a moment here. Um, <clears throat> so a still bee is listed as deer resistant. I do find that to be the case in my garden. They don't seem to fuss with these much, which is good. It is hardy to zone four, negative 20 to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets to be 16 to 18 inches in height and 12 to 18 inches in width. I think they do like a bit of water, at least in my experience, because I find that they will crisp up a little bit if I don't give them enough water. I have them in an area that gets a little bit dry, so as long as you water them and you give them a little bit of sun, they do really well. I also feed my astilbe early spring every year in order to encourage beautiful blooming. I'll show you what I feed mine with. In the fertilizer section of the store, they generally have something called Plant Tone. It's a brown bag. It's by this brand, Espoma. It's an organic, granular type fertilizer. Here at Lowe's, they're just out of it at the moment. Um, it's $14.98 for an eight pound bag. And you just sprinkle it on the ground around the uh, drip line of your plant, scratch it in a little bit, and when it rains, the plant will get fed. So Plant Tone is a great all around fertilizer for your perennials. Here's the tag in case you want to look it up at your Lowe's, but I'll also link an Amazon link below in case you wanted to check it out a bit more. Check out these gorgeous begonias. I actually bought one of these pots a couple of weeks ago um, to put in a shadier spot in my garden because they are stunning. Not only are these blooms beautiful, but look at this foliage. Gorgeous. So these are annuals and this container here is $22.98 and they come in this beautiful salmon coral pink and yellow this buttery yellow really pretty and here's a gorgeous astilbe that I've been after for a little while the dark side of the moon astilbe what's unique about this one is that it has dark foliage I actually thought it was snake root when I walked over here but it is the dark side of the moon astilbe so here is the specs on the dark side of the moon astilbe. It is a full sun, full shade. That is the other unique thing about this astilbe is that it can take sun and shade. It likes um, both, so that's awesome. And it's a perennial. This is 1598. Let's see what size container this is. It looks close to a one gallon. It's, there a little, it's a little bit bigger than some of the others, but 1598, oh, one gallon. That's what it says right here. They get to be 20 to 22 inches in height. They need 24 inch spacing and they're hardy in zones four through nine or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And they bloom midsummer to late summer. Beautiful. Look at this foliage. And my Lowe's has received some of their hardy hibiscus. I've generally only seen these show up at the garden centers um, sometimes towards the end of June, beginning of July. So I feel like it's a little bit early, but that's wonderful. You can get this planted in your garden and get ready to enjoy all of its gorgeous blooms. Typically when you see them, they're already starting to bloom. But in this case, you would get to enjoy these beautiful, large dinner size, dinner plate size blooms in your garden. So this is the Summerific Evening Rose. I've grown this variety before and then I moved it and I think it, it wasn't happy and it didn't come back. But I still have a couple of other hardy hibiscus. These like water, well, moist but well draining. And they are spectacular. When these are in bloom, they're a show for sure. This variety here has this um, really beautiful rose color and dark foliage, which actually provides even more interest to this shrub. It likes full sun. It says it can take part sun, but it will bloom best in full sun. In fact, I had mine in full sun and it did spectacular. 
and they need space because they get to be 48 inches in height and about 54 inches in width. And the reason I moved mine was because it got too big for the spot that I had it in. Um, so something to keep in mind when you're planning a spot for planting these. They're hardy in zones four through nine or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. They bloom midsummer through early fall. So if you're looking for something to give you that beautiful color as we get into the later part of summer, this would be a great option. And uh, again, the light is full to part sun. Um, I would plant it in full sun if it were me. $17.98 for this beautiful perennial is a great price. Here's what the foliage looks like. As it ages, it's dark. Really pretty contrast to all of the green in the garden. Lots of proven winners, Veronica. There are purple and pink varieties in stock. So let's check these out. So here is the Magic Show Purple Illusion Veronica. This is a full sun perennial. This is a one gallon size for $15.98. And it gets to be 16 to 18 inches in height. It needs 16 inch spacing. It is hardy in zones four through eight or to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It blooms early summer to midsummer, and it needs full sun to part sun. This is another really beautiful option for those vertical interest type perennials. And here is the pink. The pink variety is called Magic Show Pink Potion. Again, it is a full sun, Veronica. And this one is 14 to 16 inches in height. It needs 18 inch spacing. Hardy zones four through eight or to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit and it blooms early summer into midsummer. It needs full sun to part sun. Here's a great option for some ground cover, evergreen ground covers. I actually planted some of these last fall, I believe, late summer, early fall, and they're doing well. These are blue rug junipers. So ground covers are a great option. In evergreen, they stay this way all year. And there's other ground cover options too, like a juga and lamium, but those will die back as perennials over the winter where the evergreen will look like this all year round. And so these need full sun. They are $17.98 for this container here. It looks to be a two gallon or so, or just under a two gallon. And these here, they want water. Keep moist for the first year, two times per week after that. Junipers are a little bit more drought resistant once they're established. The height and width on these are one foot in height by eight feet in width. So they have a nice sprawling habit and size. They are hardy to negative 30 to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, non-hardy in zones one through two. So really hardy, down to zone three and they are deer resistant, which I can vouch for because they haven't messed with them in my garden. Blue rug juniper. Another cool option, if you have a hillside or somewhere you're trying to retain soil to keep, uh, keep it from eroding, look at this, the Parsons juniper. This one here is 1098 and has a really pretty habit. Look at that, like a rug. And this one here gets to be 18 inches in height, 48 inches in width. It is hardy down to zone four, negative 20 to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Full sun. Lots of knockout roses in stock. They have the double coral, the double pink, and the double red. And the beautiful oak leaf hydrangea. These are unique in their foliage because the foliage is reminiscent of oak leaves. And they get these large panicles of blooms. This one's actually all budded up and getting ready to bloom. And they come in many different varieties. This one here is called Ruby Slippers Oak Leaf Hydrangea. <clears throat> it likes partial sun, it gets really big blooms, and it stays compact. This is a Monrovia shrub. It looks to be just about a two gallon for $46.98. And it likes partial shade to partial sun. Water when top two inches of soil is dry. In general, hydrangeas like to be um, consistently moist. They like good, moist, well-draining soil. They bloom in summer. They're hardy in zones five through nine or hardy to negative 20 to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's average size reaching three to four feet tall and four to five feet wide. And look at this beautiful U. Nice spreading habit. 
It's actually called the Emerald Spreader Japanese Yew. This is another Monrovia shrub. It likes full or partial sun. Easy care plant, $74 for this container. It is pretty large, I'll see what size it is. It likes partial to full sun for light conditions. Water when top two inches are dry. Hardy in zones four through seven or negative 30 to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And it says it's moderate growing, reaching two to three feet tall and spreading eight to 10 feet wide. Wow. So this is a great option for a um, ground cover. If you put this in the back of a border, it's going to spread pretty well if it's happy and grow to a really large size, which means it will cover a lot of your um, surface area, providing shade below, meaning less weeding and less mulching. So this is always, always a great option is to plant these really nice ground cover type evergreens. This is a three and a half gallon or number five container for $74. If you follow my channel, you know that I love Japanese maples and this is a really beautiful red one and it's actually a great size. So if you're looking at the maturity and the size of it, the price doesn't seem as bad on this one. You can see by the root flare here and the caliper that this is a pretty mature specimen. And it is a number 10 container, nearly eight gallons of the Blood Good Japanese Maple, which is the most common and traditional red-leaved Japanese maple used in landscapes. Here's the tag. This one is $349. It likes full or partial sun eye-catching accent, dramatic fall color. These make really beautiful um, front of the garden landscape trees because everything around it is green so the red really pops. And so it likes filtered to full sun, keep soil consistently moist but not soggy, and it doesn't bloom but it will send out these little, um, I think they called Sumeras in spring. And they are hardy in zones five through eight or negative 20 to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And they slowly reach 15 to 20 feet tall and 15 feet wide. Here are the knockout roses. So this is the double coral, gorgeous color. Look at that. It softens, so it's pretty bright when it first emerges. They almost look a bit orange, and then they have this beautiful coral pink, and then they fade to more of a lighter pink. You can see here, but they're beautiful. Of all the roses I have in my garden, I have some English roses that are really difficult for me to manage. They always end up with black spot and yellow leaves, but my knockouts have done pretty well for me. Right now I have a little bit of a sawtooth lava infestation, but that shouldn't harm the shrub. It just makes the leaves look really terrible and skeletonized for a while. But these are great, great landscape roses if you're looking for a rose that is low maintenance. So this knockout is the coral knockout, and I call them doubles because these have all of the petals, where some of the other varieties, like this sunny knockout on the side of it, is more open in the center, so it's not considered a um, double. See that? You can actually see the center, which this one is a bit more pollinator friendly because they can get into the center. Like most roses, the knockout likes full sun. They're hardy in zones five through 11. And the color says it's brick orange fading to coral. It gets to be four and a half feet high by four and a half feet wide. And these are two gallon containers for $25.98. Here's the pink. This is the variety I grow in my garden. And then they also have red. Here is the red. And some new screening trees. So these are great for live fences to provide hedging and privacy. And these have a really beautiful arching habit, the foliage on these evergreens. These are the uh, Leland, not Leland, Leland Cypress. And they get really large, so you wanna give them some space. These are beautiful as a standalone tree or as we just talked about, used in a hedge or a screening privacy fence. These here get to be 50 feet in height by 15 feet in width. They're hardy down to zero to negative 10 degrees, zero to negative 10, so zone six. And they are uh, pretty sure they're deer resistant, at least in my experience, because I have a neighbor across the street who has a hedge of these and they look beautiful. They've grown really well, but definitely something to research if you deal, if you deal with deer in your garden, for sure. You never want to plant a hedge that they're going to snack on and then you'll end up with a bunch of misshapen trees. And if they're young trees, sometimes they have a hard time recovering from that. But these here are pretty large and the price on them, they like sun and they are $59.98. 
and let me see what size container. Now I can't see the size on the container, but my best guess is that it's about a 10 gallon. And the trees, if I took a measurement outside of the container, they're a solid five feet tall. Really pretty. And here's the plant that I was really excited about. It is Chantilly Lace Aruncus, also known as goat's beard. This has been on my wish list for a while, so I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these up. And this is the Proven Winners. It's a one gallon for $15.98. And this gets to be 30 to 32 inches in height. It needs 40 inch spacing. It is hardy in zones 3 through 7, so pretty hardy. And down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It blooms early summer to midsummer, and it likes sun to shade. And these are very similar to still be. Look at that. It has this lacy, ferny foliage and these creamy colored blooms. And here is another beautiful variety of flocks. This one is the Opening Act Pinka Dot Flocks by Proven Winners. And it's got a really gorgeous color, this light lavender pink, really pretty. This one here is a perennial for full sun. It is $12.98. And let's see the size on this one. It gets to be 22 to 26 inches in height. It needs 30 inch spacing and it is hardy in zones four through eight or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It blooms early summer to late summer and it likes full sun. The thing with phlox is that you can get so many different varieties. There is the early spring blooming phlox, which is the low ground cover variety. And then you can find some that have broad leaves and some like this that have the finer leaf texture and also some that bloom at different times. So this is a beautiful staple garden perennial. And if you find different varieties, you can stagger the bloom times so that you can enjoy phlox for most of the season. And check out this really beautiful honeysuckle. And I just sniffed it and it smells really nice. This is a Monrovia honeysuckle and it is called Gold Flame. It is a full to partial sun. I guess it's a climbing vine is what it looks like. And it attracts hummingbirds and it has vibrant blooms. $49.98. It says it's an excellent vine to cover a trellis, arbor, or fencing. Can be pruned to form a dense shrub-like shape. Really pretty. And it says that it's as trained. So depending how you train it and how you prune it will depend how large it gets. Really pretty. And here's another really popular perennial, Russian Sage. And this here is a more compact variety by Proven Winners called Denim and Lace. It is a full sun perennial. It looks like it was listed as perennial of the year. And it is $12.98 for their two and a half quart container. The height on this one is medium at 28 to 32 inches in height. And they need 34 inch spacing, hardy in zones four through nine or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And they bloom midsummer through fall. They have a really beautiful like lavender colored bloom and this blue gray type foliage and they thrive in pretty dry conditions. So if you have an area of the garden that doesn't get a lot of water but gets lots of sun, this is a great candidate. In fact, sage is very similar in like Nepeta and Catmint in the sense that if they don't get enough sun, they tend to open up in the center and get a bit floppy. So they certainly like a good deal of sun. And check out these gorgeous columbine. They are a light yellow that fade to almost a cream. They're stunning. Look at that. Really pretty foliage. Great part shade plant. Let's check out the variety on this one. So this is the early bird yellow columbine. It likes part sun, three to six hours of sun per day. It blooms in spring. These are $8.98. And they are hardy to zone three. So pretty hardy, negative 30 to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. They get to be nine to 11 inches in height and eight to 10 inches in width. A lot of times when I make these videos I often get comments about um, people who deal with rabbits and deer in their garden and how do I keep them away from things. 
Well, this right here is one of my favorite repellents, the Liquid Fence Deer and Rabbit. I do have some wireless deer spikes that I'm testing, but I've seen a huge increase in rabbits in my garden lately, so I have been using this pretty often. Um, it is $24.98 for this large container, and it comes with a sprayer here. You can also get the granular one. If you use the spray one after rain, you usually do have to reapply it because it'll wash some of it off. Uh, the granular one doesn't need to be reapplied as frequently, but I, in my experience, I tend to like the spray one better. And it's the same price on Amazon, so if you can't get to the store, I will leave a link below for the Liquid Fence Deer and Rabbit in the description of the video that you can check it out on Amazon. And um, if you want to read reviews, that's a good place to do it as well. Lots of beautiful annuals. So if you haven't done your containers, you can still find lots of good options. And look at this beautiful salvia. Look how thick these bloom stalks are in this dark color. Gorgeous. This is the Rockin' Fuchsia Salvia by Proven Winners. It is $9.98. It gets to be 24 to 36 inches in height and it is full sun to part sun. Gorgeous. They also have some caladiums and some cannas. So these cannas here, they have really beautiful dark broad green foliage and then they send up these stalks of these really pretty tropical blooms and so this variety here is the it says canova orange shades kennedy 1098 they're full sun and they're an annual they definitely like heat and sun this one actually already has a bloom stalk coming up and you can deadhead them which just means cutting the stalk here once they're done blooming to encourage new blooms to continue coming and here's some caladiums that they have. They have this pink one and then this more, it has a bit more white with the veining. Really pretty. So let's see what varieties these are. This really beautiful white with a bit of that pinkish red veining and some green is called Carousel. Let's see, Carousel Caladium. And it is a partial sun shade. I'm going to say that these are going to do better in some shade. Um, it is an annual for 10 98 that is gorgeous and this beautiful large pink one with the veining and some green on the edges is called sunset pink caladium also partial sun to shade annual for 1098 really pretty and check out these cheery little beauties they look like a type of rudbeckia or black-eyed Susans but they are a sunflower Sunbelievable Brown Eyed Girl Sunflower. They're a full sun annual for $14.98. And let's see here. They are fast growing. They want six plus hours of direct sun. Sunflowers love sun, hence their name, right? Watering low once established. Maturity, they get to be 32 inches in height by 40 in width. So they get to be a really good size, nice and full at 40 inches in width. They bloom summer and fall, and these will, should bloom for you if they're happy, like most annuals, will bloom until you get your first frost. And they're hardy to 32 degrees. And lots and lots of bloom buds on these. And with annuals, just like zinnias and cosmos, the more you cut them, the more blooms they'll produce. So as they start to fade, once the blooms are done, you'd want to go follow the stalk down to deadhead it or cut off the spent blooms and you will keep your plant producing all season long. And here's what I'm picking up today. I'm getting one of these proven winners, Dark Side of the Moon a still be, the Songbird Yellow Columbine, and the proven winners Chantilly Lace a Runcus or Dwarf Goat's Beard. So I hope that you've enjoyed checking out the Lowe's inventory now in the beginning of June. Thank you for spending your time with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.